and welcome to our time of scripture reading, devotional reflection for Thursday, August the 25th, 2022. I'm Brian J. Monroe, pastor of Kitimat First Baptist Church in, of course, beautiful Kitimat, British Columbia. And this is coming to you from my office in that church, which is provided generously by the congregation. I have three passages of scripture for you today, uh, a psalm, an Old Testament reading, and a New Testament reading, and then a short devotional. And um, I'm doing this so that you can hear the Word of God. I'm not really going to explain it much. Um, the devotional has its own particular theological point, uh, and I'm just giving this to you as a devotional help. And in the real deep conviction that the Word of God heard is the Word of God effective in people's lives. So we begin with a new psalm. Uh, there's uh, two psalms that are used each week in the uh, Revised Common Lectionary. They change on Sunday and on Thursday. And this one is uh, new today because today's Thursday's reading. And so we begin with Psalm 81, verse 1, and then verses 10 to 16. Sing aloud to our God our strength. Shout for joy to the God of Jacob. I am the Lord your God, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people did not listen to my voice. Israel would not submit to me. So I gave them over to their stubborn hearts to follow their own counsels. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. I would soon subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their foes. Those who hate the Lord would cringe toward him, and their fate would last forever. But he would feed you with the finest of the wheat and the honey from the rock I would and with honey from the rock I would satisfy you. The book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter eleven, verses one to seventeen. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Hear the words of this covenant, and speak to the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. You shall say to them, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Cursed be the man who does not hear the words of this covenant that I commanded your fathers when I brought them out of the land of Egypt from the iron furnace, saying, Listen to my voice, and do all that I command you. So shall you be my people, and I will be your God that I may confirm the oath that I swore to your fathers to give them a land flowing with milk and honey as, it, as at this day. Then I answered, So be it, Lord. And the Lord said to me, Proclaim all these words in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. Hear the words of this covenant and do them. For I solemnly warned your fathers when I brought them up out of the land of Egypt, warning them persistently even to this day, saying, Obey my voice. Yet they did not obey or incline their ear, but everyone walked in the stubbornness of his evil heart. Therefore I brought upon them all the words of this covenant, which I commanded them to do, but they did not. Again the Lord said to me, A conspiracy exists among the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. They have turned back to the iniquities of their forefathers, who refused to hear my words. They have gone after other gods to serve them. The house of Israel and the house of Judah have broken my covenant that I made with their fathers. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I am bringing disaster upon them that they cannot escape, Though they cry to me, I will not listen to them. Then the cities of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem will go and cry to the gods to whom they make offerings, but they cannot save them in the time of their trouble. For your gods have become as many as your cities, O Judah, and as many as the streets of Jerusalem are the altars you have set up to shame, altars to make offerings to Baal. Therefore, do not pray for this people, or lift up a cry of, uh, or prayer on their behalf, for I will not listen when they call to me in the time of their trouble. What right has my beloved in my house when she has done many vile deeds? Can even sacrificial flesh avert your doom? 
Can you then exalt? The Lord once called you a green olive tree, beautiful with good fruit. But with the roar of a great tempest, he will set fire to it, and its branches will be consumed. The Lord of hosts who planted you has decreed disaster against you because of the evil that the house of Israel and the house of Judah have done, provoking me to anger and making offerings to Baal. Now, uh, from the letter 1 Peter, chapter 3, verses 8 to 12. Finally, all of you have unity of mind, sympathy, brotherly love, a tender heart, and a humble mind. Do not repay evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, bless for to, to this you were called, that you may obtain a blessing. For, as it is written, whoever desires to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. This is your eternal word, Almighty Father God. And though it is a hard word at times, it is a true word and a just word and a righteous word. And we thank you for the gracious, good, and generous provision of it to us and ask that by the power of the Holy Spirit you will allow us to hear it, to receive it, to have it enter into us, into our very beings, and therein work what is good and pleasing to your purposes for your glory. In Christ we pray. And now, from Oswald Chambers, My Utmost for His Highest, for August the 25th, we read, The Fruitfulness of Friendship. Jesus is speaking, I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. The Gospel according to John, chapter 15, verse 15. We will never know the joy of self-sacrifice until we abandon in every particular. Self-surrender is the most difficult thing. I will if... Oh well, I suppose I must devote my life to God. There is none of the joy of self-sacrifice in that. As soon as we do abandon, the Holy Ghost gives us an imitation of the joy of Jesus. Uh, sorry, an intimation of the joy of Jesus. The final aim of self-sacrifice is laying down our lives for our friend. When the Holy Spirit comes in, the great desire is to lay down the life for Jesus. The thought of sacrifice never touches us because sacrifice is the love passion of the Holy Spirit. Our Lord is our example in the life of self-sacrifice. I delight to do your will, O my God, Jesus said. He went on with his sacrifice with exuberant joy. Have I ever yielded in absolute submission to Jesus Christ? If Jesus Christ is not the lodestar, there is no benefit in the sacrifice. But when the sacrifice is made with eyes on him... Slowly and surely, the molding influence begins to tell. Beware of letting natural affinities hinder your walk in love. One of the most cruel ways of killing natural love is by disdain built on natural affinities. The affinity of the saint is the Lord Jesus. Love for God is not sentimental. To love God as God loves is the most practical thing for the saint. I have called you friends, Jesus said. It is a friendship based on the new life created in us, which has no affinity with our old life, but only with the life of God. It is unutterably humble, unsullyedly pure, and absolutely devoted to God. Almighty Father God, may we find ourselves 
becoming every day more unutterably humble, more unsullidly pure, and more absolutely devoted to you, Almighty Father. Thank you for this, the guidance of your Holy Spirit. We pray to your glory in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our friend, our soon returning King. Amen. Thank you, friends, for sticking with me till the end on this one. And uh, until we can be together to do more of the same, I bid you in the name of Jesus Christ, Shalom.